I love the music in this game. It's like, I feel like you're in the, the neck of the woods. Oh, the harmonica? Alright, so this is Root, a game of woodland might and right. So each faction is a different woodland creature, and um, we are going to go through the series of tutorials just to give you a good sense of what the game is like. Fun fact, fun, or I should say nifty fact, because it's about me, uh, I do play the harmonica. I have one somewhere. I don't remember where it's at right now, but I have one. I think it's in a drawer in my room. <laughs> but I do play the harmonica. Mostly Christmas music, but... Alright, The Rise of the Marquis. Learn the basics of playing Root. The reason I'm doing this is because this game is a little bit of a complicated game. Just a little bit. And we are going to play it on the board. Like, I have the actual board board game of this game. Um, we're going to be playing it soon. Alright, let's get playing. This is a great game. It's a little, it's a little complicated, but it's fun. All right, welcome to Root, a game of warfare and adventure, where four unique factions struggle for control over the vast woodlands. In this scenario, you will play as the ambitious Marquis de Cat. Long before they became the military and industrial powerhouse they are today, the Marquis came into the force with a small band of warriors and a few modest buildings. I hear the flapping of wings in the distance. Move quickly to establish your hold on the forest before your feathery foes, the Eerie, arrive. It's, I think it's the Eyrie, actually. I think that's how it's pronounced. Alright. So, I'll show you the board real quick. This is the woodland. We're starting in this corner. Right, actually, wait, are we? Yeah, we're starting in that corner. And we're going to be doing different activities. Down here in this right corner is the activities we can do. For this specific faction, we click on the bottom left here, and this is their information. So they have two abilities, Field Hospital and the Keep. Um, the Field Hospital just lets you take warriors that die and put them back on the board, and the Keep is a special token that um, means you can only put pieces in that area, basically. It, it'll start to make sense a little more once we get... The whole point of this faction is they like to build. So these are like different things they can build. Workshops, sawmills, recruiters. And they are going to want to build as much as those. Because each time they build one, they get what these numbers are, are victory points. And victory points is how you win the game. Um, so right now, they want me to rule five clearings. Right now, we only rule to um, right here and right here. So we're going to move our warriors here. That's one of the actions we can do. We can move. Each clearing has a suit representing the community of creatures living there. Mouse, fox, and rabbit. So the, the clearing I'm in is a fox clearing. And the different clearings... Um, you know, different, like, cards you have, um, required to, you to be in different clearings. So that's where those kind of come in, if that makes any sense. Alright. Because you have more pieces in that clearing than an enemy, you rule it. So in this game, you, it's not like Risk, where you're trying to control territories, it's more so you're trying to do what your faction likes to do to win. Like for the cats, they like to build stuff. They can only build stuff if they rule clearings. So they kind of do want to rule as many clearings. And you rule a clearing if you have the most pieces in it. And these circles are clearings. And these little squares in the circles are where you can build stuff. So this is just saying that whenever I can, whenever I use the march action to move warriors, I can do two moves. So I moved one from here to there, and now I'm going to move one from here to here. 
I love this game. I still have to get the expansions for it. I only have the base game. Um, the reason I like it so much is because the different factions have different strategies of winning. So when you're playing the board game with like all four factions, you got four different strategies going on at the same time. So this is basically saying that these things that look like a sawmill, well, they are sawmills. They generate me wood, and I use wood to create buildings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a recruiter. A recruiter gets us more cats, gets us more soldiers. We're gonna do, we're gonna build it in this one, where there isn't one. Use the recruit action to place a warrior at each of your recruiter buildings. So now that I have a recruiter, two recruiters, I'm able to take an action where I can recruit more soldiers. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, and now we gotta spread out our warriors. So I'm just playing through the tutorial of the virtual game, just to kind of give a better understanding of what the real game, the board game, is like. Um, and hopefully, when we do finally play it, we'll have we'll be able to explain it pretty good. Uh oh! We finally have some competition in the forest. These are the airy. I think that's how you pronounce it. They are the bird faction. They have seized a nearby clearing, and they aren't friendly to outsiders. Oh my. Alright, so after three actions, the cats can only take three actions. We have finished our turn. Alright, so we're... The goals we have in the left-hand corner, all the tutorials have different goals. So our goals right now is to march our warriors into the clearing occupied, the, occupied by the Aerie to challenge them and to defeat all Aerie warriors. So right now I have one guy over here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna march. We're actually gonna march this guy over here, where he's at. Since we get two move actions, we can now move both of these guys. Oh, it didn't let me move both of them. Oh well. Usually you can move both of those guys at the same time. That's kind of what I was trying to do. Alright, so now we can fight. We're gonna fight them. They're in a tussle. They're fighting. Ooh. In battle, two dice are rolled with size 0 to 3 to determine hits. The attacker has the advantage. They take the higher roll, leaving the defender with the lower one. For instance, Okay, uh, they have plenty. Each player can deal no more hits than the number of warriors they have in the clearing of battle. So this is where it's similar to Risk. I don't know if you guys have played Risk, but you roll dice to see how many hits, but if you roll a higher number than you have soldiers in Risk, you can only deal the amount of hits that you have, you know, as the amount of soldiers left. So, let's see what I roll. Okay, so we get the higher number, two. Since we only have one warrior, it's one hit. Which is good, because they only have one warrior and we kill them. Ta-da! Bow! And they're knocked out. We got them. We got them, boys. For each hit, an enemy piece is removed from the map, starting with warriors. Your total hits are added up and displayed below. So another way of getting victory points in this game is when... Boom. Right there, see? They have built a roost. If you destroy buildings and tokens, you can get more victory points. That's the only time you get victory points by attacking. You don't get victory points when attacking soldiers. The Eerie have built a roost. They can recruit more of their warriors. You must attack and destroy it before their flock becomes too strong. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. I've used two actions so far. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use one more action and we're going to recruit. And that's the end of my turn. And now it's their turn. They have summoned a bird warrior and he's going to come fight me. I think. Yep. So now he has the advantage because he's the attacker. Let's see what they roll. Oh gosh. So he rolled a two but he only got one hit because he has one warrior so he killed my guy. That's not good. We don't like that. We don't, we don't like that at all. 
All right, let's see. I have two woods. So let's see if we can build stuff. I'm gonna build here. I'm gonna build. I think I'm gonna build another sawmill. We can use some more wood. Okay. And then I. him here. I want to be able to move both of these guys here. I don't know if it's going to let me. No. Alright, so let's battle. Rough and tough. Bam. Alright, we got him. We got him. Can kill me. Alright, he's got another way. Yep, he's probably gonna do the same thing. Let's see, we need to go destroy his roost. I think that's the goal right now. Oh gosh, he got me. Oh wait, we got each other. We're both dead. Look at that. Okay. So that's actually good because his roost is left defenseless. So what we can do is we can recruit right there, right here. And we can move him right here. And we're gonna fight his. We're gonna attack his roof since it's defenseless. Move this guy because I get two moves. I'm gonna move this guy here. Come protect these two. All right, now we're gonna fight. Bam! Defenseless. I mean, no matter what I roll. It's gonna get destroyed. So this is basically saying that whenever an area is defenseless, I get an extra hit. So that just makes it to where, even if I roll zeros across the board, I still get an extra hit, so I, it hits. Uh, so, his roost is destroyed. And I get another victory point, I think. You destroyed their roost. The force is ours for now. And I think that's the end of part one of the tutorial. So now that we know the general rules, okay, kind of understand how the game works. It's really not as complicated as you know I'm kind of making it sound. But the goal of the game is to get victory points. You do that by you know doing whatever your faction is good at cats they want to build buildings to build buildings you got to rule clearance so their whole thing is you know take control of the board and build a bunch of times to get victory points the other way you get victory points is by destroying buildings your enemy's buildings so that's kind of how this game works you move you do different actions you fight you get points hopefully you win that's how it works and we're gonna go through the main factions. I'm not gonna get into the expansions, but we're gonna. I'm gonna show you guys how to do each faction, um, so you have a little bit of an understanding when we go to play it on the board. So this next one is just to learn to play the Marquis de Cat a little bit more. It's probably gonna show us like which buildings are more important. You know, a good strategy. The Eerie, we're going to learn how to play them, we're going to learn how to play the, the Woodland Alliance, and then we're going to learn how to play the Vagabond, which is my favorite faction, and the one I'm the best at. I love the Vagabond. Alright, let's go. The invading Marquis de Cat wishes to exploit the Woodland, using its vast resources to fuel her economic, uh, economic and military machine. She scores victory points by constructing buildings in the Woodland. In a typical game, the first player to score 30 victory points wins. In this scenario, let's see if you can get to 12. Alright, so what this is introducing to, if you see in the bottom here, we have cards now. Alright, let's see what this is saying. When you start a game as the Marquis de Cat, you place your keep in one of the corner games. I normally like to go with the top player. Because if I'll show you, I'll tell you what. If you look in this corner, it only has one square to build things in. If you look at this corner, 
again, one square. In this corner, one square. This is the only corner clearing that has two squares to build it. Which means, you have, if you have more buildings, it means your keep is better defended. So we're going to put our keep right here. Bam. Which the tutorial wants us to do. Anyways. The Marquis' army greatly outnumbers the other factions. You start with a warrior in every clearing, except the one in the corner opposite your keep. That clearing is eerie territory. The birds. We don't like the birds. Until we end up playing the birds. Then we do like the birds. Finally, you must place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. So we're going to start out with some buildings here. And here. And then the roost is going to pop up and there's going to be the birds. The Eerie have swooped in and built a roost in the empty clearing. It's quite well defended. At the start of daylight, you have an you have an opportunity to craft cards from your hand using workshops. Woo! You may review. Uh, okay, so this is important. This is the crafting cost, and different factions have different ways of paying that crafting cost. For me, I have to have what's called um, forges. I think. I think it'll tell us. So the cost to craft a card is shown on the wooden board below its suit. Each workshop, that's right, it's not forges, it's workshops. So I have to build workshops. Each workshop contributes its clearing suit toward paying crafting costs. For example, you could craft this arms trader if you had two workshops in Fox Clearance. So that's where the clearing types come into play. Um, the only one I can craft is this one, because if you look at the board, um, it has a mouse. It has one mouse clearing. And I have built a workshop in one mouse clearing. So, what this is going to give us, it's going to give us a victory point, basically. And if you see that little satchel bag kind of looking thing, that's important if we were playing with the Vagabond, which we're not yet. The Vagabond, the way they play the game is they use items. And they can steal items from other players. Alright, so we got a victory point. Good job! Woo. We have to get to 12. This bottom left corner is the total we have, so we're at, we're at 1 right now. Uh, after crafting the marquee, you can take 3 actions. We're going to take 3 actions. We're going to build. We're going to place a building. Right in this. It wants us to build a workshop, I think. Oh, no, it's just telling us which ones, which different ones does. So workshops allow you to craft cards in your hand. Sawmills produce wood to help build, help you build more buildings. And recruiters, as you know, help you recruit warriors. Let's build a recruiter to bolster our defense. That's Alright, so it's going to have us build a recruiter. Now that there are two recruiter buildings, you can recruit two warriors with a single recruit action. So we got one recruiter here, and we got one up here. You'll see they'll come out this little, I call it the, the outhouse, you know, like Shrek. And now we're gonna, we're gonna march somewhere. Move your warriors to the front lines to defense against the ears. So we're gonna move over here to defend against the birds. Oh, okay. So remember how the last tutorial, it wasn't letting me choose, you know, how many warriors? Now it's letting me. So now, as you can see, I can choose to, to move all of the warriors. So we're going to march all these guys over in this corner. When you choose to march, you may take two moves. Use the second move to keep closing in on the ear. Okay, so it wants us to move these guys over here. This is actually pretty smart, early game. Um, getting your warriors to consolidate in one corner. Because if they come and attack me, they have six warriors. They have six... They, I start out with all my warriors spread out over the map. They start out with six warriors in the corner, and they kind of have to expand from there. They get victory points based on how many roots they have, and they get victory points every single turn as long as they have built roosts. And you'll, you'll see that once we get to their faction. Their faction is pretty easy, too. 
All right, to move, you must rule either the clearing you are moving from or moving to. This can make it tricky to keep, keep to move deep into enemy territory without a substantial army. All right, so now it's gonna show us um, the different the turn order. So each faction has a turn order, and there's three parts. There's the bird song, the daylight, and the evening. So for the marquee, the bird song, you place one wood at each sawmill, and then the daylight, you can first craft cards in your hand if you want. And second, you can take up to three actions, battle, march, recruit, build, or overwork. Overwork is just getting more wood. Evening, you draw a card, plus one card for each uh, extra card symbol earned on the recruit card. So that's how the cats work. They're pretty simple. Get wood, do all that, draw a card. Done. I'm going to draw a card. And now it's the Eerie's turn. Let's see what they do. The Maquis de Cat is an upstart. The lineage of the Eerie Dynasties will surely retake the forest. Alright, so they're putting cards in their decree, which we will learn how to do later. The Eerie are assigning actions to their decree. Each faction has unique capabilities and their own way of taking actions. The Eerie may not look like much yet, but their ever-growing decree will allow them to take more and more actions each turn, so long as their leader stays in power. Alright, so they're recruiting more, and then they're going to move over here. They found the weak link in our defense. Prepare to fight. So they're gonna fight. Three to one. Oh jeez. Oh boy. They're gonna beat me up. Yep. But I killed one of their guys too, so that's good. Bam. Bam. I'm dead. That's okay. And they built another roost, so they get another victory point. They get victory points each turn, as long as they have roosts. Um. We may have lost the fight, but as long as your keep still stands, we can heal fallen warriors with the field hospitals. So the field hospitals ability lets us, um, we have to pay a card, and we can return defeated warriors to the keep, which is a cool ability. It just keeps your warriors on the field. So now we have two warriors there. Yeah, it's just telling us, like, our special abilities are up there, so. All right. Don't retaliate just yet. Build two more buildings to keep gaining victory points. That's the thing with this game. Like, when you're fighting all the time, you can get caught up in, like, oh, I want to attack this guy back and lose sight of what you actually need to do to actually win the game. You know? All right, so we're going to build another building somewhere. We're going to build... Let's build one right here. Actually, wait. What cards do I have? Money, box. Uh, I have two recruiters. I have one sawmill. I have one forge. Let's build one sawmill and one recruiter. Or no, one sawmill and one forge. How about that? Let's do a sawmill here. Boom. I'm calling them forges, but they're workshops. My bad. And then we're going to build a workshop right here. Oh, wait. I have to overwork first. So, to use overwork, you must discard a card matching the suit of one of your sawmills clearings to gain a wood. Cards in the... Yeah, cards in the bird suit acts as wild and can be used in place of any other suit. So we're going to expel this card. And we're going to overwork this clearing. Get another piece of wood. And we're going to build a workshop right here. The reason I'm building it here is because it's at a bunny clearing, and this card requires a bunny clearing. As you build more of a particular building type, its cost increases along with the victory points it earns you. So that's what this um, chart here is. Um, so it's showing me, you know, it's going to cost me two wood to build the next one. Um, but every time I build another one, it gets me more and more points, which is important. Oh, the tutorial is gonna have me discard the card that I was gonna use next turn. Alright, that's fine. So, one of the cat's abilities is they can discard a bird card. It has to be specifically a bird card to take an extra action. Because we only get three actions, but we can spend a, a bird card to get more actions. So, that's what we're gonna do. And it wants us to recruit, so we're gonna get more guys. That's good. Alright. 
Fury's turn. What are they gonna do? Alright, they're gonna recruit. More warriors arrive each day. The Eerie will use them to crush your pitiful forces. They're gonna move over here. Oh gosh! They're moving all five of them! Oh gosh, wait. Okay, so what what happens here? The Eerie have entered turmoil. What that means, the Eerie have a decree, and they have to follow that decree every single turn. If there's any time where the Eerie can't follow their decree for whatever reason, they go into turmoil, which means they um, discard all of their decree, they lose victory points, and they have to start over. They don't lose any of their roosts, though, but they do lose a lot, and they have to pick a new leader. You'll you'll understand it when we play the, the Eerie in the next tutorial. Alright. So basically, it's, I think at this point it's letting us have free reign of what we're going to do. So now actually I get to choose and I have to get 12 victory points. So the way we're going to do that is by destroying roosts and um, building buildings. So what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to move these guys. I'm going to move all of these boys over here and destroy the roost. And I'm also... I only need one here to destroy the roost, so what I could do is back these boys up. Maybe five of each. Five, five and five. Right now, we're gonna destroy the roost. This will get us a bit Woo! Boom. Their roost is gone. Which prevents them from getting more victory points, too. Alright. Now, let's see, I got two wood. I could build, I could overwork. Um, I could fight them if I wanted to. I mean, it really wouldn't give me victory points, but it would help. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fight him. Let's see what happens. Alright, I got two of their guys, at least. That helps. That's good. Bam. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use my field hospital building. And I'll get another warrior here. Alright, that was my turn. Alright, let's pass the turn to them, see what they do. Alright, they put a card in their decree. They're recruiting. Oh, he's gonna fight me up here. Maybe. Oh. Oh, now he's gonna fight me here. I got you. It's kinda outnumbered, but... Oh, nothing happens. Zero, zero. Alright, it's kind of a standstill. And now it's back to my turn. So I'm gonna keep trying to get points each turn. That's my goal. Um, he has one more roost here, which we could destroy. But I think this turn, since we have a good amount of wood, um, we're gonna build. And we're going to build a recruiter. I got a recruiter here, a recruiter here. I think I'm going to put a recruiter... I think I'm going to put one here. Yeah. I'm also going to build another sawmill. I think that would be smart. I'm just going to build again. I'm gonna build again because it gets me victory points faster. All right, so I'm gonna build a sawmill. We're gonna build one right here. That should get us two more victory points. I think, yep, we're at 10 now. Okay, and now, I guess I'm gonna try to just kill these guys because they're in my way. I could also try to kill that guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go after these guys. Oh god. That's all right. We're gonna kill these guys. Okay. Nice, we got him. Well we did lose one. That's okay though. That's all I'm I'm fine with that. Alright. 
Now it's the end of my turn. I got to draw two because I, uh, right here, I get an extra card. Alright, so there, oh my gosh, he's recruiting a lot of warriors. Oh boy. He's still coming to try to beat me up. That's what the Eerie tried to do. They tried to clear my clear. And they try to... Oh, see, look. He just destroyed me. He rolled a three. He destroyed me and my building. I saw him. And now he's going to probably build a roost. Well, actually, he would have, but he doesn't have that on his decree yet. So, he can't. Um... How many warriors did I lose? One? I'll discard that one. I'll get another warrior over there. Alright. So, I can craft this card because I have a workshop in a mouse player. And this costs one mouse player. So, and that, hey! See that? See what it gives us? It gives us two victory points. If I craft it, I win the game. Or I don't, I don't win the game. I win this tutorial. So you know what? That's what we're going to do. So we're going to craft this card. It's going to give us two victory points. Boom. And we get the, we get the 12. Ta-da! Alright, so now hopefully you understand how the cats work. They like to build buildings. And they like to destroy everybody else's stuff. That's how they get points. I love how the, the birds are just kind of passed out in the corner. Thank you guys for watching this video. This is only part one of four of our Root tutorial series, and this Monday we will be playing the board game on our live stream for the first time. So definitely check out the other parts. Part two will be the Airy faction. Part three will be the Woodland Alliance. Part four will be the Vagabond. Definitely like and subscribe to not miss out. Thank you guys.